Participate in the lesson? No, because Sit still. If you sleep, you can't hear. Yeah. Okay, so we want to try to get that. We, of course, have snacks for everybody, but we have these special treats for those that are extra good during the lesson. Does anybody remember what book of the Bible our lesson was in last week? the same as the week before and the week before and the week before. We had about 16 lessons from that one book. Does anybody remember what book our lessons were from for the last 16 weeks? Uh, I have one, two, three, four hands go up. Anyone else think they know? Okay, let's see. If your hand is up on three, tell me the, no, the book. One, Two, three. Revelation. Revelation. That's right. Now, which book in the Bible is Revelation? Last the last one. Do you know which number that is? How many books are in the Bible? Sixty-six. So, Revelation is the sixty-sixth book in the Bible. We're at the very end of the Bible, and the very end of the Bible tells us about the very end of the world, right? Yes. And so, what do we do when we get to the end? We start over and go all the way back to the beginning. We're going to have to learn our books of the Old Testament song. I think Miss Allison is going to make us a list of the books of the Old Testament so we can sing the books of the Old Testament song, so we can learn the order of them. But I think everybody knows what the very first book in the Bible is. Does anybody know what the very first book in the Bible is? It's not on the chalkboard. Genesis. It is Genesis. That's right. Does anybody know, don't play with that, you're going to cause somebody else to want to goof off. Does anybody know what the book, what the word Genesis means? What does the word Genesis mean? Hayden, do you know? In the beginning. Did you just say that because Ian said that? Or did you think that's what it means? You think that's what it means? Does anybody, how many agree with Ian and Hayden? That Genesis means in the beginning. If you were to agree with them, you would be right. Genesis means in the beginning. So, we stopped, we said some things. Mrs. Wilkman already had us think of things that God made, right? But if we were in science class in school, a lot of times in school we, we get told that the earth came about in a different way. That there was molecules that split and then got back together and grew in amoebas. And uh, we, we learn about um, skeletons that they found that they think are not completely human, but maybe part ape and part human. We don't need to be learning about school right now, but I need to tell you that if you're learning that in school, and I hate to say this because you would think that school would tell you the truth, but that is not true. Lots of stuff you learn in science, if it tells you about how everything that we have around us came to be, it's probably not true. Because lots of people in the world don't believe the Bible. 
They don't believe at least what the Bible says in the beginning. So anyway, we are going to learn today a little bit about the very beginning. Before the trees were here, what was here? Does anybody know? Nothing. Nothing that we could see. Was there anything there before the trees? No. Nothing, nothing at all. It's a trick question there. What about before the sky and the water? Was there anything there before the sky and the water? What, before the land and the trees and the sky and the water and the lights? White. Was there anything? Nothing except God. Yep. And so God was having a conversation with himself. How can God have a conversation with himself? God the Father, God the Son, right? And God the Holy Spirit. All three of those people are God. And they were talking together and they said, we should make the world. And in the world, we should make man. And so let's make the world a special place just for man. Let's show as much as we can about ourselves when we make the world. And so, in the very beginning, God created the heaven. Have you ever made anything? How many of you have made yeah. something? What did you make? One time. Real quick. I, I'm Don't. still working on it, but what it's is an it? aerobotic cockroach. An aerobot aerobotic co cockroach. Okay. What did you make? A birdhouse. What did you make? A birdhouse suit? Any, any, anybody, any of you ever make cookies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and what about brownies? Make brownies and cookies. So, important thing, important thing to think about. When you made that, what did you make it with? You made it with wood. You got, you got stuff that you're putting together to make your, your cockroach. You made a birdhouse too? What did you make? Where? Uh, we made cookies with our... With what? Bought us for Christmas, baby, easy bake oven, and um... Yeah. My dad bought Nene and You had an oven, and... But then you had, like, you had flour, right? Yeah. And maybe some chocolate chips, and some <laughs> other stuff. And that's what you, you... For every single one of us. I've got to keep going here, otherwise we'll be here forever, forever, forever. Every single one of us, if we make something... We use something to make it. Listen, but when God made the heaven and the earth, he didn't have anything to make it with. He just used his words. He said, he, he said, let there be light. And there was light. He created the heaven and the earth with his words. Nobody is, I have never done this. I could never say, let there be cookies. <laughs> and all of a sudden, cookies show up. If I said, let there be cookies, and cookies showed up, it would be because Mrs. Vogelin heard it, and she went to work really hard and made cookies. But not with God. God says, let there be heaven, let there be earth, let there be light. And God makes everything. God made everything out of nothing. And on the very first day, he made heaven and earth, and he said, there needs to be light. I want there to be light. And so there was light, and he divided, he split the light. What's the opposite of light? Dark. So at night, it's dark, and in the daytime, it's light. And God created daytime, light, and nighttime, dark. And then the next day, and everything he made was perfect. It was perfect. And so the next day, he said... I want there to be sky and water. And all of a sudden, there was sky and water. So on the first day, there was heaven and earth and nothing else, and then light. And then on the second day, there was sky and water. The whole earth was water. It was all water. And then, on the third day, God said... He's probably thinking something like this. If we make man, he's going to need somewhere to live. And we're not going to make him so that he can live in the water. So we're going to need some land for man to, work to, to, to live on. You think maybe he said something like that? Mm -hmm. 
Maybe. So on the third day, he said, let's gather all the land into one spot and all the water go into another spot. So we have land and water. And you know what? If the man, if the man is going to be on the land, he's going to have to eat some things. And we don't want it just to be dirt. We want it to be beautiful because it needs to reflect who we are. And so what did he do? On the land, he let the land have plants on it. And big plants and little plants, giant trees and little pieces of grass and, and trees that have fruit in them. He, let, he made the plants have seeds in them so that they would reproduce, so that there would be trees over and over, year after year. God hasn't created any trees since the third day. And we still have trees, don't we? Because he created it so that they would reproduce, so that trees might die, but then they come back and other trees come in their place. So, he created land, separated the land from there, and then on the fourth day, he said, man is going to need to know like what year it is and all of that type of thing. And so he created the sun. The sun tells us what year it is. The earth goes around the sun how many times in a year? One. One time. So then the next time around, we know it's the second year, right? And the third year and the fourth year, it's a year. One time around the sun. And he, God said there should be a moon for the night time. And the moon tells us pretty much what a month is like. God gave us the sun and the moon and the stars for signs and for seasons and for times. God knew that man would need those things. And then he looked at the air and the sea and he thought, I want there to be light inside the air and the sea. And so on the fifth day, he created birds and fish. Everything that swims in the, in the seas, whether it's in a river or in the ocean. What are some things that, that are in the rivers and the oceans? What's something? Jellyfish. Yeah. Octopus. Did God create an octopus? He did. What about in the sky? What are some things that are in the skies? Airplane. Did God create airplanes? God created man, and man figured out how to put airplanes together. But what are some things God created that are in the sky? Fish are not in the sky. Kaylee? Birds? That's right. What about... Stars, that was on day four, he created stars. Stars are way out in the universe. Can you think of something else that's in the sky? The sun, that was on day four. Something that's in the sky around us. Birds, what else? The moon, that was on day four. That's kind of a hard one, maybe. What about this little, like a ladybug that flies through the air? Yeah, butterflies. Okay. So, then, on the sixth day, on the sixth day, God said, let's put some living things on the earth. What are things that are on the earth that are living? Beside human beings. Dinosaurs. God created the dinosaurs. Dogs. Birds, that was on day five. What about what something else? Big cats meaning tigers. Big tigers and tigers, big cats, little cats, kangaroos, every animal we could think of. And God told, okay, God told those everything he created to multiply and reproduce. So did God create any animals last year? No. He created them all on day six. And then he created them so that they can have babies. And those babies can grow up. And then they can have babies. So, so dogs have little puppies, right? It is. Who created the life cycle? God. God did. Then he said, all right, now we have everything ready. Let's make man. Okay, I need to keep going because we have more things to say. Yeah. So, 
God said, I've got everything ready. Let's make man. Do you know, does anybody remember how God made man? Somebody said, he didn't make man with words. Everything else he said, and it was created. But with man, he got some dirt. He got some dirt, and he shaped it into a man, and then it was just dirt. What made it so so man was man? What's the difference? What made it so man was man? Does anybody remember? God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. Now listen, man is different from all the other animals. God just spoke, and those were animals. But so, so are apes people? No. Are gorillas people? No. Are people gorillas? No. Did people come from gorillas? No. No. God created us. God shaped us into a person, and then God breathed into us, and he made it so man, all of us, can talk with him. Do animals talk to God? No. No. Animals just do what they're supposed to do. God created them to do certain things. And when they but, die, they go up to heaven. Well, there are animals in heaven, but I don't know if the animals that are on earth go to heaven. So, listen. But God made man special. God made man like him. God could decide what he wanted to do, right? And so people can decide what they want to do, can't they? Animals kind of make choices, but they don't always make choices. They just kind of just do whatever. But people, they can they can think about stuff. They can decide whether they want to do something or whether they don't want to do something. They have choices. They can they know what's right and what's wrong. God made man separate, and he's made man that way because he needed somebody to be in charge of everything that he had created. And so God made man to be in charge of everything. He said, I want you to take charge of everything I've created and make it even better. But then he looked at man. He had man. Does anybody know what the, what the first man's name was? It was Adam. So he looked at Adam and he said, something's not right here. Something's not right here. I think Adam needs a partner. And so he put, he said, Adam, it's time for you to take a nap. All this is on day six. And he made a wife for Adam out of Adam. And when Adam woke up, he looked at what God had created and said, Wow, I like that. I'm going to call her woman. Because she was taken out of man. And so God brought Eve to Adam. And Adam and Eve were the very first family on the earth. And that was on day six. So there's some things all of that tells us that we need to understand. First, we need to know from that something about God. God gave us the Bible so we can learn about it. We have Bibles there. I forgot to have you turn to the first book in the Bible. Genesis 1.1. We'll do that. We'll look at it next week. But God gave us the Bible so we can learn about Him. What do we learn about Him from creation? The first thing we learn is that He is eternal. We learn that God is eternal. That means He was there before everything else. And He will always be here. We had a birthday, right? We started on a certain day, and someday we're going to die unless Jesus comes back. But does God have a birthday? No. No, he doesn't. He has always been. He's eternal. And then we learn that God is wise. God made the earth for man, but he made it a perfect place for man. How much oxygen is in the air? Thousands. Exactly the amount of oxygen that we need to breathe. If the, God made, the, made earth for us. What if, if God made the sun in a certain spot? How far away is the sun from the earth? Does anybody know? About 93 million miles away. That's a long way, but what if it was 94 million miles away? We would freeze to that. Yeah. Who is smart enough to put the sun exactly where it belongs for the earth? God. 
Only God could do that. No. So, and God made everything perfect. So he is wise, and he is eternal, and he provided a way for us to rest. Do you think God was tired after he had created everything? God is all-powerful. He could just with his mind. It wasn't hard for him to make that stuff? No. He just, he just said a couple words, and all of a sudden it was there. So did that tire him out? No, but still, the Bible tells us he rested on the seventh day. On the seventh day, he rested. Why did God rest on the seventh day? Because he knew we would need to rest on the seventh day. So how many days do we work? We should work six days. And on the seventh day, we can rest and worship God. That's why we should go to church on Sunday. We say that's the Lord's day. We, go to, we remember Him. We should remember Him all the day, but especially on the seventh day. Now, so, God tells us all these things, and there's some things that we should do. Um, because, we, because He's told us these things. First, we need to believe it. If somebody says that man came from a monkey, it's not true. I don't care if the biggest, thickest science book tells you that man came from a monkey. They're dumb. They don't know what's true. They might not be dumb, that's what, but they don't believe the truth. Some people say that man came from fish. Yeah. A scientist, lots of scientists believe that man was an amoeba and then split and then got together and pretty soon it was a tadpole and then the tadpole grew some fins and some some uh, a tail and turned into a fish and then the fish jumped up on the on the land like a duck and then I don't know it doesn't make sense but lots of science teachers believe that but God doesn't want us to believe that. God wants us to believe the Bible. God made man. And because God made us, we have to do what he says. God created us. And so we have to obey him. A lot of people don't want to believe creation because they don't want to believe in God. Because they don't want to obey God. They want to do what they want to do. Okay? Every one of us has had a choice. Like maybe our mom or our dad said, hey, I want you to do this. And we thought, every once in a while at least, we thought, well, I want to do what I want to do. Well, all of mankind is that way. And God wants us to serve Him. God wants us to worship Him. God wants us to believe in Him and do what He says. But man, we don't want to do that. We're, we've, something happened. And so, God had given man responsibility and, and created him perfect. And when we learn that, we should understand that we are God. He made us, he owns us, and so we have to do whatever he says. Now, next week, we're going to, with that, today we learn about the beginning of everything. And next week, we're going to learn about the beginning of sin. When God created the world, everything was perfect. No sin. But somehow sin got here, and next week we're going to learn how it got.